welcome to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this video, we're going to go over the muscles of the shoulders and arms. We will learn about flexors and extensors of the arm and we will look at the individual muscles of the arm, including but not limited to the biceps, triceps, the digitorum profundus, the carpe ulnaris, and more. This is the 24th video in this video course, Anatomy 101. To view the entire course, make sure you see the link above. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also post a comment and subscribe to the channel. Alright guys, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Nine muscles are associated with the functionality of the shoulder and their classification is according to the functions they perform. The classification is broken down into four groups, namely the flexors, the extenders, the abductors, and the rotators. Flexors are made up of the coral cobrachialis that originates from the scapula bone across the shoulder and attaches to the humerus medially. The other flexor muscle is the pectoralis major, a huge and thick muscle that is shaped like a fan. It functions to pull the upper arm forward and also across the upper thorax. It also functions to rotate the humerus bone and its medial location in addition to performing abduction on an arm that is raised. The second type is called the extensor muscle. It includes the teres major, which is linked to the humerus and scapula, and functions to cause adduction of the arm in addition to medially rotating it. The other extensor muscle is the latimus dorsi, that is a wide triangular shaped muscle arising from the lower back, going around the axillary region, and finishes in the armpit, extending to adduct the upper arm and medially causes the rotation of the humerus bone. Its action entails pulling back the upper arm during exercises such as climbing, rowing in water, and also swimming in water. Abductor muscles, this group consists of the supraspinatus muscle, which forms between the greater tubercle of the humerus bone with the flat and broad scapula. This muscle medially rotates. Another rotator muscle is the infraspinatus muscle and attaches to the spine and the humerus with its contraction leading to the lateral rotation of the arm. The last of the rotator muscle and the last of the shoulder cross muscle is the teres minor, which is a small muscle that connects the humerus and the scapula. Its contraction with the infraspinous muscle causes a lateral rotation of the arm. A majority of movement of the forearm is initiated by the radius and ulna laden muscle that links the pectoral girdle or the humerus bone. Specific forearm moving muscles are divided into flexors and rotators, and finally extenders. Its extenders include biceps brachii, that is a muscle rich in flesh, and its anatomical distribution of being round covers up the entire anterior region of the forearm. It links up with the scapula and causes flexion activity at the elbow of the hand. Biceps brachii laterally supinates the hand, for example, when a person uses a screwdriver or in the case of a person opening a door using a doorknob. The brachialis is the second flexor, large forearm muscle, and it links to the humerus shaft and lies inferior to the biceps brachii. It connects the ulna with the humerus shaft. Brachycondralis is the last of the flexor muscles and links the radius with the humerus, enabling the flexion capabilities of the elbow. Extensor muscles of the forearm are called the triceps brachii. It is the only back arm muscle with three heads. It links up the ulna with the humerus. It also extends the elbow. Rotators are the final type of muscle. It consists of the supinator muscle that is short and links the radius with the ulna and humerus. Supinator muscle supports biceps brachii in the lateral rotation of the forearm. 
pronator teres muscle is the second rotator muscle and it also is short linking the ulna and the humerus to the radial bone. Its action is medial rotation of the forearm. The last rotator muscle and also the last of the forearm is the pronator quadratus that links the distal ends of the radius bone with the distal ends of the ulna. In order to achieve the nest movements of the hands with uttermost accuracy, we need several muscles, which include the fingers, the wrist, the muscles that arise from the radius and ulna are also implicated, in addition to those that arise from the distal ends of the humerus. The hands muscles are divided into two large groups called the flexors and the extenders. Flexor muscles of the hands include the flexor carpi radius that is very fleshy and runs in the medial axis anteriorly in the forearm. It attaches to the metacarpal bones from the furthermost end of the humerus. This muscle functions to abduct the hand and produces the flexion activity of the wrist. Flexor carpi ulnaris is the second flexor muscle and borders the forearm medially. It links to the nearest end of the ulna with the furthest end of the humerus with the metacarpals. The muscle functions to produce wrist flexion activities and cause adduction to the hand. Palmaris longus is the third hand flexor muscle that is not as fleshy as the others, but it is very slender, appearing medially to the forearm. It links the palm fascia with the furthest end of the humerus and causes wrist flexion movements. The third flexor muscle is the flexor digitorum profundus that is a large muscle compared to the other flexors linking the phalanges to the ulna. It functions to flex finger joints and the distal fingers. Flexor digitorum superficialis is the last of the flexor muscles and is as large as the latter muscle. It's located anatomically underneath the flexor muscle carpi ulnaris and it causes finger flexion solo but in unison with other muscles. It also causes wrist flexion. Extensors are the last of the hand muscles arising from the forearm and they include the extender carpi radialis longus that connects the hand with the humerus and causes the wrist to extend and the hands to abduct. The second extensor is the extensor carpi radialis brevis that assists the latter muscle joining the metacarpals with the humerus. It assists the hand in abduction, also movement of a limb towards the midline, and wrist extension. Extension is the opposite of flexion and means the straightening and lengthening of the body parts. Extensor carpi ulnaris is another extensor and is found superficially and posteriorly to the ulna, linking the hands with the humerus. When you see the word superficially, this means on the outward or outside. Adduction of the hands and the extension of the wrist are major functions. Extensor digitorium is the last extensor muscle and is found medially and posteriorly to the forearm. It links the phalanges with the humerus and causes finger extension. All these muscles link to the forearm with the hands to provide the accurate motions and functionality of the hand. These intrinsic muscles include polymer interossi, hypothanar, dorsal interossi, and the lumbrical muscles. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the different muscles of the shoulder and arms. I hope you learned a lot in a very visual and simulating way. I definitely had a lot of fun making the video for you.
<laughs> if you are studying anatomy and physiology or you're going to be studying anatomy and physiology in the next few months, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology there. In this program, I give you specific tips on how to strategically read, how to strategically review PowerPoints, and a ton of other lifestyle tips that will help you ace this class in a very fun and fascinating way. This program's been around for several years and has helped thousands of students get the grades they want. So make sure you join your classmates and become a member of this channel to ace anatomy. All right guys, make sure you stay tuned and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. I'll talk to you soon, bye.